Thank you for the privilege of speaking about the International Association for Religious Freedom in its 124th year. We have just completed the 36th Congress in the land of religious freedom, Transylvania, where in 1568, the only Unitarian King, John Sigismund, granted freedom of conscience in religious matters to his people. He broke with the practice of the, that the religion of the king dictated the religion of the people. His reign ended quickly with the alleged hunting accident and religious tolerance and longing for interfaith understanding and cooperation would languish until 1893 at the World's Parliament of Religion in Chicago. Liberal Religions IARF has kept the dream alive until today. In 1900, liberal religionists carried forward the dreams of the World's Parliament of Religions and founded what was to become IARF. Their membership would be dominated by Unitarians for more than two-thirds of the first century of existence. But the name changes signal attempts to clarify IARF's identity and open its membership. Reverend Shinichiro Imaoka of Japan, of the Japan Free Religious Association, would recall this history. In the year 1900 in Boston, the initial name was the International Association of the Unitarian and Other Liberal Religious Thinkers and Workers. It was founded as a Unitarian group, but at the second meeting in 1907, the name was changed to the Congress of Religious Liberals. Then in 1910, in Berlin, the name was changed to the International Congress of Free Christianity and Religious Progress. In 1932, in Switzerland, it was changed to the International Association for Liberal Christianity and Religious Freedom. Since that time, the abbreviation IARF has been used. The word Christianity was specifically included to supplant the word Unitarian in the original title and to include all Christianity. At Boston, in 1969, the word Christianity was deleted. It was good to remove the word Christianity, but then the title was reduced to only the International Association for Religious Freedom. It was because the word Christianity was deleted that such Shinto and Buddhist groups as Risho Kosekai, Konkokyo, Sabaki Jinja, and Tupozu Inari Shrine could join the IARF. In 1984, an attempt was made to change the name from IARF to IAFR, the International Association for Free Religion. That failed. In 2002, in Budapest, an attempt was made to change the very identity of IARF to an agency to defend religions whose practices had come into conflict with their nation's laws no matter how seemingly questionable their identity or record of service for humanity. IARF was conceived from the world's parliament of religions, continuing the attempt to bring together representative of the world's religions as equals on the same stage. IARF from 1900 to 1913, with the name change in every Congress, and dominated by British and American Unitarians, led an era of liberal Christianity and optimism. The very zenith of liberalism, dashed by World War I, which ended IARF's first period. Following the war, a second period began with a Congress in Leiden in 1922, characterized by efforts to prevent all wars, ending in 1937 with World War II. After a pause, the third period began in 1949 with the Congress in Amsterdam, dominated by the struggle against totalitarianism in Eastern Europe and the quest for peace between superpowers. Symbolically, it ended with the fall of the Berlin Wall. A fourth period, 
of a search for a niche just to survive was seen most clearly in Budapest in 2002, where an offer to incorporate IARF into a mind-controlling sect was attempted, and that was escaped, and IARF was not turned into its agency. We have begun a fifth period of the Anthropocene, signaling imminent global threats with great danger to the entire planet, which is no longer somewhere in the future. It was their great merit that Robert Ince and the former council managed to keep IARF alive despite financial and membership decline. Meeting in the facilities of the Hungarian Unitarian Church in Kulishbor, Cluj, Romania, Bishop Istvan Kovács and outgoing President Robert Ince opened the 36th Congress, joined by devotions and prayers from many, uh, our many religious traditions. The hybrid Congress was held with on-site participants and online members from our 47 religious organizations. The theme, Faith and Reconciliation, was designed for Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who was unable to attend. Thus, an unexpected honor of the keynote speaker fell upon me. A remarkable array of presenters spoke to the many facets of reconciliation as a process of remembrance, acknowledgement, confession, forgiveness, restitution, and even instances when all seem to f impossible. The key issue that IARF faces today is not merely survival. We must become relevant, time-specific relevance. We have to find a new voice that appeals to young and old. All over the world where we are represented and where we will be. We must reinvent ourselves. We have the potential. We have already some initial success. Let me briefly outline our initial results and future strategy. Several new members have already joined since the Congress and more seem ready. The steady financial decline has been reversed. The UUA quadrupled its support. Other member groups have indicated that they increased their pledge of support. Several members have actually given more than any of our uh, charter groups. The embarrassment of underpaying our executive secretary is being addressed. New committees have been formed, but I have made a mistake thinking that the prestigious representatives on the council would have time and energy to head all these committees. Becoming a working and service international council has been slower than expected. We no longer have a secretariat with half a dozen paid staff. So we need volunteers with skills, time, dedication to the principles of liberating spirituality, a free religion, which I will explain in a moment. Our major innovation for the new era is the Institute for the Study of Free Religion. When the spirit of liberal religion was almost crushed in World War I, IARF had to innovate. By the end of World War II, liberalism was not as easily defended as at the beginning of the 20th century. In fact, it has lost its assumed moral high ground, especially in colonized lands and cultures. Now, even concepts like freedom and democracy can be used by warrior states with religious ideologies singing their praises. 
We must go beyond liberal and conservative religion, beyond polarized thinking in dyads that simplify and falsify. Both liberal and conservative religion have some liberating aspects, but also some that enslave. We need to become more articulate about our religious identities and worth to humanity. IARF is uniquely in the position to gather our collective wisdom and help us live compassionately and knowledgeably in this Anthropocene age that we have entered. The time for religion that liberates is now. The European chapter is considering making free religion its conference theme for next year. And at Cambridge, the Reverend Andrew James Brown is leading his congregation in the study and implementation of free religion as a faith community. Will you join us to share your knowledge of your traditions and help us teach ourselves, our children, and our grandchildren the skills and knowledge needed? As was recently said in a Hungarian speech, it is not about the kind of world that we lead, leave our children. That concept should be reversed. What kind of children we should leave the world. So here are 10 of 90 or more digital classes of free religion liberating spirituality. One, the basics of religion. Two, interfaith or intrafaith dialogue. Three, human rights. Four, existential crises. Five, meditation. Six, beyond belief. Seven, biology and faith. Eight, moral development. Nine, death and dying. Ten, women's self-defense. These are just a beginning. We can survive and even thrive in the Anthropocene without much financial support with volunteers, interns, and vibrant youth programs. Yet youth programs with work camps, conferences, visits, and scholarships for the less privileged will need financial support. I am aware that American religious liberals are said to be the least generous for religious causes, but I do know that this is not true. The Transylvanian Unitarian Partner Church movement demonstrated their extraordinary generosity. And in the new era that we are entering, IARF needs exactly this kind of generosity. I appeal to you, join us, donate your time and skill, study with us, and if you wish to prepare our youth for a world that we have created, sponsor a program or project. IARF is unique. IARF is emerging from the fire of a new era as the phoenix of free religion.